Good evening. I am Xavier Solomon. I am the Peter J. Sharp Chief Curator at the Frick Collection in New York. In just a few days, on the 14th of July, 231 years ago, the Bastille in Paris was stormed. This, of course, marked the date, 14th July 1789, the beginning of the French Revolution. And since we're going to be talking about the revolution tonight, and also about the royal patron of the objects we will be talking about, Queen Marie Antoinette of France, I've decided that the cocktail tonight is a Kir Royale. This was a cocktail invented in the 20th century by um, Feli uh, Kir, who was um, a mayor of the town of Dijon in uh, Burgundy, and it is made out of creme de cassis and champagne. Cheers. When visitors come to the Frick Collection, they usually focus on the collection of paintings and then look at sculpture. But one of the type of objects that is often uh, ignored or, or passed over is actually furniture. And the Frick is very lucky because we have a series of French 18th century pieces of furniture that are actually very important and are among the greatest works in the collection. Here you see a photos from the 1920s of the South Hall um, with the Bronzino portrait and under the Bronzino portrait, one of the two pieces of furniture I will be talking about today. Here is that same piece of furniture today with uh, a Degas above it. And if you look to the left, you see the companion piece, which is now placed under a Murillo painting and flanked by our two Vermeers. This set of pieces of furniture is composed of a commode and a secrétaire. That's what these uh, pieces of furniture were known as. And they were usually created as pairs uh, for the rooms of the aristocracy in France. These two specific pieces of furniture have a royal provenance. And at the Frick, we have a series of works of art, paintings and furniture, uh, and also pieces of um, porcelain, which have royal connections. We have objects created for at least two of the mistresses of Louis XV, Madame de Pompadour and Madame de Barry, and we have pieces made for the royal family. We have a commode made for Louis XV's daughter, Madame Victoire, and what we're going to focus on today are these two pieces of furniture, which were made for the Queen of France, Marie Antoinette, the daughter of Empress Maria Theresa and wife of King Louis XVI. These two pieces of furniture were designed, created by Jean-Henri Risner, and even though Risner may sound sound as a French name, he was originally German. Johann Heinrich Riesener, who was born in 1734 in the town of Gladbeck in Westphalia um, and moved as a young man to France and worked together with one of the providers of royal furniture, Jean-Francois Urbin, who was also German in origins. And Riesener worked with Urbin and in 1768, when, when Urban died, married his uh, widow. And only a few years later, in 1774, he was made the Ebeniste du Roi, the royal furniture maker. And here you see him in a beautiful portrait by uh, Antoine Vestier. This is uh, Risner around the middle uh, of the 1780s, around 1785, 1786. And this is a portrait now at Versailles, which shows him leaning on one of his own creations, one of the wonderful tables that he made. But just to give you a few examples of um, furniture made by Riesner, this is the great Bureau de Roi, uh, the desk of the king, which was actually begun by Urban and um, was then finished by Riesner after Urban's death. And this is now at Versailles. This was made for King Louis XV and is one of the first greatest works that uh, Riesner works on for the royal family. But other um, wonderful pieces of furniture include this great uh, jewel cabinet, which was, was made for the Comtesse de Provence um, and is now in the Royal Collection in England. 
The Frick Collection has five pieces by Riesner. And these two, as I, as I mentioned, are the most important ones because of the royal connection. And they were made a commission uh, by Marie Antoinette. So here is the commode, which is basically a chest of drawers uh, with two central um, drawers. And you, you see the line, the horizontal line um, in the middle, sort of dividing the upper and lower uh, drawer. This is made out of a number of precious different woods. This is marquetry. Uh, it is veneered with uh, these different woods, which would have provided color and decoration for the piece of furniture. And it is topped by a slab of marble. This is um, a, a specific type of marble, um, which is called breche d'allée. Um, and it is um, sort of colored in sort of yellow and, and red. And the rest of the furniture is decorated with gilt bronze mounds. Um, here are some more details. Here you see the very beautiful slab of marble. Um, and here is the central part of the piece of furniture with this medallion with two doves and uh, cupids, bow and arrows. Um, all around them, the decoration, the wood inlaid decoration um, provides uh, sort of pictorial depictions of garlands of flowers and these beautiful geometrical patterns um, combined with the gilt bronzes. And here's a detail of one of the corners with this incredible um, sort of group of flowers and leaves um, streaming down the side of the commode. Uh, the companion piece is the secretaire. And the secretaire, as the name suggests, was a piece of furniture where secret things were kept, where there were lots of secret compartments. And so while this looks um, quite sort of monolithic from the outside, um, it does open up. And so the, the, the top part opens up towards the viewer. So you could sit at this piece of furniture and, and write, use it as a writing desk. And then there are various drawers, smaller drawers above and below. And it's a very complex uh, piece of furniture in the way it was made. Again, here is uh, one of the plaques of the marquetry work where you see these wonderful details of, of flowers and vases and, and various scientific instruments and books and a number of different ob objects with little birds flying uh, between the flowers. This, of course, now um, looks as if it was made um, with different woods and different colors, but you see them all as um, a, a sort of fairly limited range of colors. But you have to imagine that to begin with, French marquetry furniture was actually very brightly colored. Uh, they used a number of exotic woods that would provide the brightness, the, the red, the pink, uh, the green, the blue, that would, would give um, a colorful um, look to the piece of furniture. And this is just to give you an example of something related, but this is a piece of furniture by Martin Carlin uh, in the Metropolitan Museum. And this actually includes wood, gilt bronze, and plaques of Sèvres porcelain. Now those bright colors that you see with the porcelain uh, in these sort of still lives of flowers and garlands were the type of flowers that were actually originally on the Riesner commode and secretaire. You have to imagine that they were maybe not quite as bright as these, but much closer to the effect of porcelain and colored um, bright scenes than what we see today. And unfortunately, these change very quickly. So as soon as they were made, these pieces of furniture, the, the wood changed and, and the color uh, uh, mutated, and that is something that unfortunately cannot be reversed. And so today, when you look at a great piece of Riesner, you always have to think that um, part of the great effect it would have had to begin with is unfortunately lost. The two pieces at the Frick were made for Marie Antoinette, and they were made probably in the early mid 1780s for the Chateau de Saint Cloud. The Chateau de Saint Cloud was a few miles west of Paris on the Seine and was the residence of the Duc d'Orléans. And the king, Louis XVI, buys it from the Orléans family and gives it to Marie Antoinette as her private property. So this becomes not quite a royal residence, but a private residence for the queen, where she would take refuge. And the decoration of Saint Cloud becomes one of her favorite pastimes in the mid 1780s. And this um, remained one of her favorite residences. Uh, we know from stamps and writings on the back of our pieces of furniture that they originally came and presumably were made uh, for Saint Cloud. 
Unfortunately, the Chateau de Saint Cloud doesn't exist anymore. It was destroyed in the um, early 1870s during the Franco Prussian War. And here is a photo of the shell of part of the, of the chateau, um, which is unfortunately altogether um, lost and it was uh, demolished. But Marie Antoinette commissioned other pieces of Riesner around the same time. And so this is another set of a secretaire and commode made in 1783 for the Queen. These were made originally for Versailles, for a private um, room of Marie Antoinette, where she kept a Japanese collection of lacquer pieces, uh, many of which had been given to her by her mother, Maria Theresa, uh, who would send them from Vienna to, to Paris. These are among my favorite pieces of Riesner. These are at the Met, um, across Fifth Avenue from, from the Frick. And even though the shape is pretty much the same as the shape of our secretaire and commode, uh, you can see that these are more richly decorated, a lot more gilt bronze. But these are also uh, made using 17th century lacquer panels from Japan. So they reused pieces of Japanese art um, in this piece of furniture. And these two, here's the commode and a detail, and here is the wonderful secretaire with the lacquer panels, and here you see it open. Um, these were made for Versailles, but actually were also moved to Saint-Cloud Saint -Cloud, uh, at some point um, during the Queen's life. And so um, they both, both these, these sets of secretaires and commode uh, were in the same chateau at, um, at one point in the 1780s. But why am I talking about these pieces today and what do they have to do with Bastille Day? After the taking of the Bastille, uh, the crowd stormed Versailles and the king and queen were moved to Paris and moved to the Tuileries Palace. And this is another royal palace, which unfortunately doesn't exist anymore. Here you see it in a 19th century photo. This was destroyed in 1871 and what where the palace was, this was an original uh, Valois palace built in the 16th century and then much remodeled and changed later on. Um, not particularly inhabited by the kings and queens of France in the 18th century. Louis XV spent part of his childhood there uh, before returning to Versailles and Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette spent most of their lives at Versailles. But the king and queen were brought uh, there as prisoners in the 1790s. And uh, this is the last royal residence of uh, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. It closed off the western uh, side of the Louvre Palace. So what you see on the left and right at the pavilions uh, of the Louvre still standing, everything in between was demolished in, 18, in the 1870s. Um, so the king and queen resided here and Marie Antoinette redecorated her apartments on the ground and first floor uh, of the Tuileries towards the garden um, where she brought pieces from Versailles. And so the commode and the secretaire that Riesner had made for Saint-Cloud were actually sent from Saint-Cloud to the Tuileries. And these were amongst the pieces of furniture the queen lived with in the last years of her life. We know they were at the Tuileries because an inventory of 1793 actually lists them both and explains that the marble top of the commode had been smashed and it was broken. And this probably happened when also the Tuileries Palace was stormed in 1792. And this really uh, marked uh, the end of the monarchy in France. Both pieces of furniture at the Frick are signed and the commode is signed uh, 1791, the secretaire is signed a year earlier, 1790, and we know, however, they were made in the 1780s. So the Riesner signatures and dates actually mark a substantial restoration, refurbishment of the two pieces of furniture. They were altered, probably simplified, um, for Marie Antoinette's new apartment. So they were probably deemed to be too um, lavish for the, uh, for the new residence of the queen. And so the queen herself um, asked for them to be altered by his nerf. So these two pieces of furniture at the Frick are not only royal commissions, but also commissions that were changed for the queen and commissions that were altered to do with the revolution and the, um, the events around, of course, the Bastille, day and beyond that, and the imprisonment of the king and queen at the Tuileries. Of course, um, these were among the last 
um, pieces of furniture that the king and queen would have lived with. Uh, with the storming of the of the Tuileries and the uh, the murder of the of the royal guard of the of the Swiss guards of the king, uh, both king and queen were imprisoned and put on trial, and uh, both were beheaded in 1793. The king on the 21st of January, uh, the queen later in the year on the 16th of October. And here you see. Uh, their posthumous monument in the uh, Church of Saint-Denis in Paris, where all the royal tombs and monuments are. So, of course, um, while the life of the king, lives of the king and queen uh, ended under very sad circumstances, and of course, uh, with their tragic uh, beheadings, uh, the furniture uh, was, was taken away from the Tuileries and put up for sale. And it eventually reached the collection of the Dukes of Hamilton, from which J.P. Morgan acquired them, and the, the merchant Duveen, the art dealer Duveen, in 1915 sold them to Frick. So for the last 105 years, they've been at the Frick collection. So I hope you will all be drinking Quai Royal on, on Bastille Day, and next time you're at the Frick collection, um, look at these incredible pieces of royal furniture and these great treasures of Risner. See you for the next episode of Cocktails with the Curator.